G'day Frothers, so just doing a quick rundown of the commonly used expansion bolts uh, in rock climbing. So we've got wedge bolts and also sleeve anchors. So I'm just going to quickly run through some like pros and cons, uh, how you use them, how they work, and then a few things you want to watch out for when you're actually installing these things too. Let's take a look. Okay, so first up is a wedge bolt. So uh, all these expansion bolts do have some kind of wedge on them, but uh, these things do have a number of different names. I'll just be calling them wedge bolts. So a defining feature of these is that they are a single shaft. They have a little clip on the bottom, and then around the clip, the bolt is actually narrowed, and then it's got a big wedge at the bottom. So these guys, you use the same size drill bit and the same sized hole as the bolt itself. So this is a 10 millimeter or M10 bolt. So you drill a 10 millimeter hole. So this style of bolt is usually the ones that are made specifically for climbing. So these guys are from Rorma. Uh, you can see they're, you know, pretty fancy. But they work exactly the same as like the normal construction grade ones. So your sort of six, your, your 65, 70 mil or your 85 mil, those ones, they're pretty common size for just standard climbing bolts in good hard stone like that. So a 10 millimeter bolt goes with a 10 millimeter hole hanger. You can't just slip the hanger on past the expansion part, so you've always got to disassemble them. It's always nice to put these back on with the information on the outside, so future people can inspect, make sure you're using the right kind of steel, all that. Um, so from the outside, when they're installed, they look like that. This style of bolt will often have a bit of an extra post, so extra metal on there, because they take quite a lot of hammering to get them in, so they give you extra metal to hit when you're hammering it in to protect the thread. And I do see a lot of people hammering them in by the nut. Uh, personally, I avoid that. It's probably fine, but it just doesn't sit right with me, so I try not to do that. So once that clip part is embedded in the material, you know, your rock or your concrete, uh, it's not coming out. The clip automatically engages. Nice friction. It's got nice friction bumps on there to keep it in the hole. Uh, and then that expands over the wedge, and then that locks it in place. So if you haven't drilled your hole deep enough, uh, you won't be able to just, you know, pull it out and try again. So if your hole isn't deep enough and you only get them in, say, that far, that'll still work. That'll still be, you know, probably strong enough for your purposes, but you will have all this stuff poking out the end, and uh, that's not great. So you may need to come back with a grinder and chop that off, because a big bolt poking out like that is potentially hazardous for your climbers. Uh, firstly, as just an injury risk, but also snagging carabiners on. This style of bolt does come in a variety of different sizes. Uh, so you can get little 8mm ones, this one's made by Rorma, so that's for, you know, caving, abseil anchors. Or you can get 12mm ones, which is a much bigger bolt than the 10mm. But for the 12mm ones, or, you know, half inch, whatever size you're working with, you've got to use the right hole hanger. And that is a bloody big strong bolt. You can often get bigger lengths of these as well, so you can grab longer sizes of these in case you, say, want to pin down a hold or you just want to make sure you've got some really solid embedment. And you can also get some super long ones, which I guess would be for, you know, pinning down blocks and things like that. So sleeve bolts, this is the sort of standard type sleeve bolt, AKA Dyna bolt. Again, a few different names for this, but the standard sort of type has the nut at the top, a sleeve, and then a bolt with a wedge. So the internal bolt of a sleeve bolt is the same as the smaller size wedge bolt. You know, the nuts are interchangeable, but because of the sleeve on there, that takes it up a size. So in this case, that is a 10 millimeter bolt M10 thread. You drill a 12 millimeter hole. So when you tighten up these bolts, the wedge expands the sleeve down the bottom there. And that creates your interference joint, your friction joint in the bottom of the hole. So this is a 12 millimeter bolt. This style you would normally run with a 12 millimeter hanger. But you can also run them with a 10 millimeter hanger if you've got enough room on the bolt there. Sometimes the bolt itself is long enough that you can actually run the hanger directly on there. Uh, with some brands. This brand doesn't look like you can do that. So this particular brand has the flanged nut on there, so that's that nut with the extra flat part there, so it doesn't need a washer. 
but often they'll just come with a normal nut and a washer. The other style of sleeve anchor is my personal favorite. This is the flush head. So this one has the nut at the bottom. So these are a standard machine bolt with a sleeve and the nut is the wedge at the bottom. So with these ones, when you do up the bolt, the wedge expands the sleeve and that makes your interference joint in the bottom of the hole. So these guys are going to be equivalent to your, your rule five piece that you can get in North America. I've never actually seen one of those in the flesh, so if anyone knows what all those extra pieces are for, let us know. So another reason I prefer the flush heads is because they're, they're more versatile. They can take a 12 millimeter hanger or a 10 millimeter hanger. So with the 12 millimeter, the hanger sits on the sleeve. And then when you, when you bolt it onto the wall, tightening the nut will provide the clamping force onto the wall itself just like one of those just like that style bolt but you need to have it all the way in the hole to run flush heads with a 10 millimeter hanger you disassemble stick the bolt through and in this case the sleeve actually presses against the back of the hanger itself so when you tighten it up, that provides clamping force on the hanger. So because of that extra clamping force, they do tend to be less prone to spinning as well. So when installing these, you don't want to have too much thread poking out. Some manufacturers will say, give it like three millimeters of thread, but you know, you'll never be able to measure that. So try and hammer it in as flush as you can, because when you tighten it up, that is going to poke out a little bit. So it'll probably end up like that. You want to try and get it in sort of like that so you've got a bit of headroom and to drill don't forget you've got the little uh, angle on the tip you can't use that very end of the hole there so give it a few mils extra so we'll just mark it to about there give us a few mils extra headroom don't forget your PPE and for this video we're just going to assume that you've done all the climbing part right so you know you've got your your, your, your edge spacing of, you know, at least a bolt length, preferably a little bit more from all the edges, all that business. But we're going to go there. And now the fun part. So I know some people don't clean the holes or, you know, kind of just blow them out a little bit. I always try to do a proper clean, no matter what the bolt is. So for hammering these in, I like to get the nut well clear. And try to strike with fewer, harder blows, uh, because that deforms the metal less. And I do try to avoid hitting the nut, so these guys have that extra bit of metal poking up to allow you to do that. I like to use socket wrenches. But then we just torque to manufacturer's specification, which is usually 30 or 40 kilonewtons. So use a torque wrench if you like, uh, but realistically you want to get these as tight as you can get with a, a short handle spanner. That's usually fine. Oh man, oh, I just fucking bought this thing. God damn it. But sounds about right. That one's just about right, I think. I'd probably like a little bit more bolt poking up, just because these threads on the end, they're not like full threads. Um, just to make sure you've got full thread binding on the nut there, but uh, that totally fine. And one of the reasons I don't like using these ones as much is um, there are a few ways that that can actually snag carabiners and things. So just watch out for that. 
And to remove these, it's easy enough to undo the nut. You know, kind of make it go away. Uh, you can try pounding that in. If you think the hole is deep enough, you can cut that off. Or if you know how, there is a way to grab that and spin it and then pull it out. I've never actually managed to do that, but, you know, there are some videos out there showing you how to do it. Should have done it towards the back. Oh man, now this is going to look weird. Friggin' filming. Okay, so we're installing the standard kind of sleeve anchor. Oh, sometimes you can just get them on straight away. 12mm outside bolt, 12mm drill bit. And of course, if you're using a blow tube, try and get a long tube so you don't need to stick your face right in the hole. Okay, so that's a handy measurement too. Uh, if you measure out your bolt versus your brush, you can make sure that you've actually drilled deep enough when that goes in there. So this style of bolt will us usually go in much easier. Uh, then the wedge bolt, but then they'll also come out easier as well. So if you're bolting on lead, that might help you because you can get them in quicker. So make sure it's all the way in. When you're doing them up, try and do nice smooth strokes to avoid galling. So with these ones, the clamping force comes from the nut going down on the bolt. Unlike the, unlike the wedge anchors, it won't just keep going down. So you're gonna make sure they're all the way in the hole. All right, and next is the flush head sleeve anchor with the 10 millimeter hanger on there. About the same drill depth. And these guys are easier to get in than the wedge anchors again. So all the way in. So when you tighten these up, if you're using the 10 millimeter hanger, just be careful because the, the tightening can push the whole thing off skew. So if that's happening, you just want to grab a quick draw, hold it straight. So these ones will usually end up with the hanger oriented straight up and down, whereas these ones will usually end up basically however you want, but it's better to have them correctly angled so that part of the hanger is straight up and down. This part is in line with the actual load. So removing these is usually pretty straightforward. You just undo the knot. Take that off. Tap that in slightly because that'll disengage it from the sleeve. If you grab it by the sleeve, you should be able to just pull it out. These ones, you can remove them more or less the same way, but obviously you can't get to the nut, so you just gotta hope it doesn't seize. So undo that. And if you're lucky, you'll be able to unscrew it. So often they'll just end up sort of loose like that because the nut is just spinning freely at the back. So if that happens, so yeah, if you get lucky, you can just unscrew that. And with a little bit of screwing around, this one looks like it's going to take more work, um, but uh, you can actually, you can usually pull that thing out uh, and then the nut is still at the back, so then you fish it out with your brush or a wire or something. Okay, so I wasn't able to get that particular sleeve out, but I just hammered the rest in uh, with the rotary hammer and then you can patch that hole with whatever you like to patch. Okay, so a couple of finer points to bear in mind. One is that sleeve anchors will be done up when uh, the sleeve is pressed against the bolt or the nut at the end. So that means if you're driving them in, you can fully do this bolt up when it isn't fully embedded in the rock. So 
See? So that is done up. So if your hole isn't deep enough, the bolt can still be set, but it's not nice to leave them like that. So, you know, try and remove it, drill the hole a bit deeper, and, uh, you know, learn your lesson. And something else to consider with wedge bolts is, once they're in past there, past that actual wedge clip, uh, they're not coming out. So that, so that means if you're bolting on lead, you can, uh, you can actually get yourself clipped on there, start hanging on it, start taking a rest before it's fully in, because that bolt is set. Uh, you, don't, you can't really do that with the sleeve bolts. So if you're going to be bolting on lead, you know, maybe that's a nice strategy for you. It's going to be a lot less sketchy than clipping the bloody drill bit. So there you go, guys. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Uh, happy bolting, happy climbing, and I'll scratch you later. <laughs>